Lo, thanks so much for talking to me today. Thanks, bro. Absolute pleasure. Let's find some questions. Okay, so you play Lucas mm -hmm. in the film, Confetti. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your character. Lucas is um, a guy who tries his absolute best because he really cares about the people in his life. Um, I think he's one of those guys that cares so much that it kind of trips him up. And um, he avoids confrontation to the point that it becomes a problem. Mm. Um, and that's his big struggle in the film, is just manning up and saying the things that need to be said, you know, and doing the things that need to be done. So he does all these other things to try and compensate for, you know, um, you know, not doing the right thing and not, not manning up, and that has consequences. Yes. You know, and so he has to face that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's quite a, a, a common thing. You know, we all mean well, um, and uh, but there's a certain point where the truth is often better than trying to compensate for the things you've done wrong. Yeah. You know? And so that's his struggle. That's what mm -hmm. he does. He's a regular guy. He's a good oak, but he's got problems. He's, he's, got, uh, he's got faults. Yes. You know? And, and so he struggles with that. And um, by the end of the story, he realizes that he, he needs to face his demons. Mm -hmm. And when he does that, he, he kind of wins. Yeah. yeah. You know? Something that's quite prevalent in the film is him saying, you know, better to say sorry after you've done something than asking permission yeah, to do it he thinks, beforehand. Yeah, he thinks you, yeah. You, know, you can just say sorry and apologize, but um, you know, that's something I often say to my kids. Mm -hmm. I don't, you can say sorry and that's fine, but I prefer if you just did the right thing. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. which, is, which is harder because we have a tendency in life to um, give ourselves permission to, to do things that aren't necessarily right because we know we can say sorry afterwards mm -hmm. instead of just like facing facing reality you know yeah. and um, so that's what he does that's 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 his thing mm. uh, you also wrote the script that's right so in, in developing the character lucas is an alcoholic mm -hmm. to the story what was the backstory that you created for him um developing the drinking the alcohol is it connected to his relationship with um, Jean, played by Nico, and Cheryl, played by Katie Bill Yeah, look, uh, it's quite a serious thing. I mean, alcoholism is a, it's a disease. Um, and so there are many things that drive that disease. But what's important with that is how do you recover? How do you, how do you deal with it? So he uses you know, this, this problem of his as a crutch to avoid in those difficult situations. And so um, it becomes a symptom of the problem. Um, at, at one point in the film he says, uh, you know, I can deal with, um, you know, I was happy being numb. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you're numb you don't feel anything. But of course the knock-on effect of that is that things <laughs> become worse and worse and worse. So, you know, it's a, it's a reality for the character, but it's also a, a metaphor for what his problem is, which is rather do something else, rather try to forget, rather try to feel something else than face up to, you know, the thing you need to face up to. Mm. Um, and so, so that's that's why it went that way. Um, look, it's it's a like I say, it's a traumatic thing, and it's a serious thing, and it affects lots of people yeah. in South Africa. It's a huge problem in South Africa, and um, I. You know, I've got a lot of sympathy for that. I've, I've, I've had experience with enough. I've known people with, um, you know, various addiction problems, and they're often really fantastic people um, that struggle with this thing. And, yes. and so, I didn't want to just laugh at this, you know, guy that drinks too much because I, I think that's that's not what it's about. It's about what drives those things and how do you overcome it. Um, and um, so it's it's an exploration of it, and it's a tough thing, as as you may have seen from the film. It's not just jokes yeah. and laughter. Yeah. It's a it's a serious thing because these problems have serious repercussions. So the film is an exploration of how do we get over these problems? Mm. How do we deal with it in reality? How do we really get to a point? And and that's what the development of the characters about is saying at a certain point, I'm going to be bigger 
than my problem. I am more than my problem. Yes. There's more to me than just my disease or my problem. Mm. And um, so that's what he does. Mm. Nice. As an actor and a writer, also you you writing and you created the show Rugby Motors, mm -hmm. um, which is what it's called. I know there's an Afrikaans name for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it Rugby Motors. Yeah, Rugby Motors, um, which is also quite a serious show. Yeah, I mean, in in uh, you know in the subtext, there's serious issues. That yes, yes. About, you know, people being um, uh, economically disenfranchised. It's about um, uh, communities that have to learn to to. Um, where people from different cultural and, and racial backgrounds have to start to live together and, and how to deal with those conflicts, um, same as in confetti, mm -hmm. love, unrequited love, um, conflict, all of those things. You know, comedy is a, is a very interesting zone because um, there's a, it's very accessible on the surface and you mm -hmm. get to laugh, but it always has to be driven by genuine, real, emotional issues that that um, underpin all these things. Yes. You know, it's the the comedy is always like the, the outer layer. In order for comedy to at least in my opinion to to hit home and to touch an audience or to move an audience, there needs to be deeper emotional themes that underpin the comedy. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's what you try to put across with your with your writing, especially that the, the comedy is there so you've got the comedic angle so people can relate to it, but you've also got the Deeper metaphors. Always. Stuff. I mean, nothing is. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I think the comedy always plays better when the characters are three-dimensional and real and solid and mm. have have uh, deeper lives than just you know what's immediately strikes you. You know, in the story or the dialogue, there's always other things underneath it, just like in life, mm -hmm. because you know, art imitates life, and um, all of us have deeper layers. Yes. You know, and and. and um, uh, darker issues, you know, the light, light exists in the context of shadow and, and shadow exists Absolutely. in the context of light. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, in terms of, I'm not going to say it's easier because, I mean, comedy is so difficult, drama is difficult too, but um, as, as a writer and, and, and an actor, which one do you prefer? Uh, the more comedic, you know, just, I mean, no, no, no not fun, obviously, because there's a lot of metaphors and, you know, levels to it. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. Look, I, comedy is comes quite naturally to me. And I've been doing a lot of drama lately and I've, I've, I've loved going to those places without having to, you know, um, elicit a laugh from the audience. Mm -hmm. And I'd, it probably sounds like a cop-out, but in many ways, drama and comedy for me, you know, they play together. Mm -hmm. um, more so than choosing comedy or drama one above the other, I like playing between them, and I like varying roles and going from dramatic roles to comedic roles, back to dramatic roles. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the real love for me and the, the point of interest for me lies in the, the balance between the two and the interplay between drama and comedy. Mm -hmm. that, that's what really turns yes. me on. It's more about um, exploring the, you know, the human condition in its entirety than saying comedy is better than drama or drama is better than comedy. Absolutely. And you've got quite a lot of that in Confetti, where you go from the very comedic moments into the very dramatic moments, mm. especially when your, your, your um, you know, discussions with Cheryl through the right. door. And John and Cheryl as well. Yes. You know, yes. There's, um, there's real stuff there. Mm. Often we, if you think about it, very often when things, shocking things happen, the first reaction that people have is, is laughter. Is laughter, yes. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's not so much about comedy, uh, it's more about relationships mm. and people and what happens yeah. between people, because I'm fascinated by that. I always have been. Um, I've always enjoyed film since I was a small, small kid. And I've always enjoyed reading, and, and the really good stuff always has a measure of both. Mm -hmm. The first films I actually enjoyed, the first three films I saw was E.T., the first Superman mm -hmm. and the Champ, uh, Franco Zeffirelli's yes, The Champ, yes. with uh, Ricky Schroeder and um, John Voight. And that film moved me so much. Mm. I mean, I cried my eyes out in The Champ, and something was sparked in me at that, at that age where I realized that 
film can make you feel things and it allows you to access things and it allows you to understand things and I've spent the rest of my life trying to get to that point where I can elicit feelings from audiences and where I can uh, help facilitate insight you know? mm. and, and I think any form, no matter how uh, taxing or how entertaining it is, needs to do that to a degree, you know? Yeah, yeah, they need to have a purpose, otherwise why watch it? Yeah, it needs to be driven by something. Yes, yes. You know, and um, so, you know, despite the fact that this film is a comedy, it's, it really is all about stuff that's quite dear and important to mm. me on a personal level. Mm. Mm. It's not just about, I, I didn't, I, I've never been able to make things just because I think that, um, Hopefully, people will dig it. You know, I, I I make things because they they start off with an inspiration. Something inspires an idea. Something sparks an idea, and I get excited by that. Yeah. Um, and then you drive it forward. Yeah. You know, and you, you 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 say, okay, so I'm feeling this. I'm inspired by this idea. Then the story becomes, how do I illustrate the thing that I've experienced, or the insight that I've had, or the feeling that I'm feeling? Yeah. And so the stories then become devices of how t how do you punctuate those ideas? Yeah, yeah. Did you base any of the characters or the events in the film on anything that happened to you in real life, or was it all just imagined? Um, well, look, the reality is anything any writer ever writes is is inspired by things mm -hmm. either directly or indirectly that, that they've experienced. Some of it was quite specifically. <laughs> You know, yes. inspired. Uh, You're not going to tell us what. <laughs> <laughs> Look, my wife is Jewish, and I'm an Afrikaans boy. So, okay. So right at the beginning, there there was this. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, this is an interesting thing because I've got very specific insight. That I've been very lucky, and I've been very uh, welcomed and um, accepted by the Jewish part of my family. Hmm. But uh, nevertheless, everybody involved in that process. Of me marrying my wife, all the families, people had to learn to accept these yes. things. So, you know, that, that drives I The first Jewish wedding I went to was absolute, absolute chaos and disaster. There was, a, there was a drunk guest on the Jewish side of the family that took huge offense to me being there. Uh. And <laughs> Chaos, oh, I can it imagine. involved a hand biting and an ice throwing incident, and a, a wedding train being stomped off in the dark, and <laughs> it was hugely chaotic and oh, traumatic for me. But you know, in retrospect, it was mm. a fantastic story. Yeah, absolutely, all, all stuck really, in the brain really bank. All that time yeah. they to use. And uh, you know, weddings are weddings are amazing things. Mm -hmm. People travel from far. Um, families have to meet. Families are created. Mm -hmm. um, there's elements of new beginnings. There's yeah. elements of chapters ending. Um, so all the stakes are hugely raised. Absolutely. All the emotions are hugely raised. And for me, that is just like a, the most perfect breeding like ground for, cake for you know, <laughs> drama and yeah, chaos absolutely. and comedy. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. You you're doing a lot of work at the moment. I've got a list here. It's Alice with Malice. Um, um, Glass of Tango, in, uh, um, Jimmy and Pink, mm -hmm. your, your TV show, Robbie mm -hmm. Motors, this confetti, mm -hmm. and you're going to go pretty much straight from this into shooting Hollywood in my haste. Yeah, I've also got Swartwater, which Swartwater. is Swartwater, that TV was the other one I was thinking about. I kept looking for the name and I could ah, not find it, but no. that's one. I've, I've seen the promos for it. Yeah, it's like a stunning show. It's a fantastic yes. show. We've had great writers and great directors on there. I also made a film last year that's hopefully coming out this year called uh, Love the One You Love, which is a yes. fantastic experimental that's fantastic. Uh, art film. Um, I'll appear in Kite opposite Terminal Jackson later in the year. Where did yeah. you find the time? <laughs> I mean, with your family obligations as well, because you, you've got uh, small kids, don't you? Yeah, I've got yes. two kids. I don't have a life. <laughs> I, I have work and family. Yes. You know, and um, no, it's rough. It's really hard. And, you know, making a living uh, as a filmmaker and as an actor in South Africa is rough. Mm. It's very, very hard. Uh, we, we um, you know, you, you do interviews and, and, and you go on TV and, and people think that, made, but it's not like it. It's still very much a hand-to-mouth way of living. 
Having said which, I, I consider myself immensely blessed because I love doing this. I, I love it, you know, as much I think as it is possible to love something um, that isn't another human being. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it's been a fantastic time. It's a blessed time, and I, I, I'm going to keep going. Keep trucking, baby. That's fantastic. You know? Well, all the best for all your projects <laughs> and Thanks, confetti. Brad. It's fantastic. Always nice to check you, John. Thanks so much. Absolutely. To you too.